Good morning, one and all, and welcome to today's video. So we've got a lot to get through today because I have four pairs on watch, and those are pound dollar, pound Swiss, euro CAD, and euro Kiwi. So we've had a bit of movement across the market. Still nothing in the way of entries, but that's trading for you, hopefully, or maybe something will straight shape up today. We shall see. If it doesn't, then I will not be looking to place a trade. If it does, then great. So. First up on my list is pound dollar. Why am I looking at this? I'm looking at this and I do have to go quite quickly because it takes a while to get through all these pairs. But we have this one, two, three touch structure with a one, two, three middle section, which gives me a clue that this is a completed piece of structure and we don't need to come all the way back down here, especially when we have a near miss. We have a near miss here to this high here. And these often get taken out. So not always straight away, but if we have a completed piece of structure and we've moved up and we have the natural ebb and flow of the market impulse correction continuation, then there's a strong likelihood that we are heading up to these highs to take out this near miss and the high that we near miss too. Okay, so that's the bigger picture as I see it. So you can see here, I've just uh, sort of separated these patterns. We leave a footprint, we come back down, we take that low out. We push up, we have another correction, but then we scoop all the way back down here. But then once we broke below here and caught people the wrong side of the market, we pushed up aggressively and you can see we've corrected. So we've had an impulse correction, potential continuation above this low, which we broke below, giving me a clue that price is likely to find its way at least up to here before doing anything else. The buyers that got in here are likely to be getting out of their positions here. And even if we kind of, moved up to here and came down and formed something very steep like that to give us a one, two, three, which taps into there. I'm not seeing that at this moment in time, but there would still be enough profit potential between here and here, even if that was to occur. So, so that is the higher time frame picture as I see, see it. You can see on the daily, we've had a ton of momentum now. This is not indicative of a move back down to test these lows at this moment in time. And as I drill down a little bit further, you can see that kind of had this kind of more corrective price action here we kind of had this this structure here excuse the drawing we kind of retested the back end of this retested push back up then we go into then we we kind of leave a footprint here we scoop back round we take out the liquidity that was there price moves up we then kind of have this kind of running channel structure we then leave with another footprint price comes down it wicks to that uh, through that footprint but then it comes back down again we leave that near miss this is the near miss that i was talking about we come back down we leave a near miss push up meaning that there's likely still liquidity there that needs to be filled we come back down take out that liquidity and we do so by way of full bodied price action that is a as opposed to just a wick, full-bodied price action, then we push up aggressively. So what I'm seeing now, you can see we've broken out of all of this. I'm seeing this as a potential tight flag, uh, which we can potentially capital on by, uh, capitalize on by um, because the volume has been built up within here. So it's likely that this correction will only be a small one because uh, of the volume that's been built up in here which will likely cause this to move to the upside. Okay, So after these larger corrections, we typically see smaller ones. So that gives me a clue that I could be looking for a small tight flag today. So with all of that in mind and just being mindful of the time, what are we looking for? When we do have a move up, which is as impulsive as this, regardless of whether I'm playing the volume of this or not, I don't tend to take... Uh, reduced risk entries my plan says not to take reduced risk entries on the break of such flags because they tend to be unreliable and they can turn into larger versions or slightly larger versions of, of themselves okay so i'm always analyzing the proportions of a tight flag relative to the move up which has preceded it so if i was to get a risk entry within the flag i would be able to manage this in case so if we got something more like this this looks a little bit underdeveloped to me. If this was to form something slightly larger than its uh, larger than itself, then and, and push back down, then if I was to get 
uh, long within the flag, I will be able to manage it, even if price came back down to do something like that. But at the moment, this looks slightly undeveloped to me. If we just analyze this on the five minute, that looks a little bit undeveloped. Okay, so I'll be looking for something more in the region you know, of price to give us some kind of middle section like that push down. And then we would have that one, two, three. And then I would look to get long within within the flag uh, if we got something like that. So that is pound dollar. Just looking for that risk entry within the type flag. I have set an alert. I've set an alert just to see if price pushes up to give us a bit more depth and to give us that structure that I'll be looking for. And if it doesn't, then I'll not be looking to place a trade on this pair today. So that is pound dollar. That's what I'm going to be looking for. That alert may trigger by the end of the video. We shall see. If it does, then I will set a new one to see if we can push back down to these lows. Okay, so that is the game plan with pound dollar. Going to leave that on the chart. So pound Swiss. Pound Swiss on the higher time frames. Okay, we have a, a similar kind of picture. We have that one two, three, it's one, two, three touch structure with a middle section giving me a clue that this is a completed piece of structure, okay? So there's no re reason for price to come. I was anticipating this today. There's going to be alerts going off all over the place. I can guarantee you that, but anyway. Okay, so we broke below this low, caught people the wrong side of the market and then completely pushed back in. Giving me a clue, giving me a clue that this is a potential impulse correction continuation to push higher. Okay, especially when we have a we have a near miss to that high. We have a near miss to that high. We have a near miss down here to this low. We near miss to this low, come back down, break below the low, catch people the wrong side of the market, and that gives me a clue that this is a completed piece of structure. Okay, because that has a a one, two, three middle section as well. You've washed everybody out. So I'm just seeing this as an impulse correction continuation to push higher, to take out this high, this high, and this high, which we keep near missing too. Okay. And um, if we drill down a little bit, you can see that we have a similar picture here. We have that kind of one, one, two, three. Within that, we have this structure here which also has a middle section. Okay, give me a clue that this is a completed piece of structure and, and so is this, okay? But because we're potentially trading into this high, okay, I'll not be looking, We would, if I was to take a trade here, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be well positioned so much. So what I'll be looking for, if you just look at the structure of that, that doesn't, you know, if we were to form something down here, just looking at this, it would, it would be something like this and this just wouldn't look right for a move to the upside so early on into the move. So trying to analyze the entire thought process process in 20 minutes is not easy. <laughs> but uh, what I'll be looking for with that in mind is if price, again, let's get that off the chart. I think I've just deleted something I shouldn't have done there, but there we go. If we break above this area of value and we correct sideways, then that is a very clear indication uh, that we'll be moving to the upside, okay, and it will have negated all of this kind, kind of slightly more corrective price action. And then you can see that we will be above here, and I will be able to manage it up to these highs. But again, because of you know how big this move is, this move here, I'll not be looking to place. Uh, if this does shape up, I'm not be looking for a reduced risk entry on the break of the flag. I'll only be looking for a risk entry within it. That is my rules. That's what I'm going to be sticking to. So I've I've uh, set an alert to see if we can break above here. You can see we are getting some momentum coming in. Whether that pushes up above here, given how price has moved up, is another matter. But on the higher time frames, that's certainly the narrative as I see it. So if we break above here, get a flag, I'll be looking for a risk entry within it. And then I'll be looking to manage it up to this high here as a first target for something in the region of uh, 5 to 6%. So that is pound Swiss. I'm going to move on to the next pair, which is EuroCAD, which I believe is where my alert just went off. We'll deal with that in a minute. <laughs> this is going to be really hectic today, trying to deal with everything that's going on, but um, it is what it is. Right, so we have, we we scoop back round, tapped into this low, 
Okay, and also just to touch on it, I think I've just noticed that as well. Not quite as significant, but we have this low here. So we come down, we near miss to this low. We near miss to that low, you see. We come back down, we tap into that low, and we push up. So I'm seeing this as, you know, we don't need to come all the way back down to these lows because we've already tapped the liquidity that was there. So I'm just seeing this as a, an impulse correction continuation to push higher to take out this near miss and this high, which we near miss to, or that's the higher time frame direction. But that doesn't mean that we can't capitalize um, on a potential move down to this low here before that uh, move to the upside. And I shall touch on why as we drill down. So as if we just zoom in a little bit, okay, you can see on the weekly at least that although we near missed to this high, which also adds weight to the higher time frame direction, we did near miss that that high, hit high here. We have broken above here and we are well and truly back below this low and below this low. And we've done so with momentum, okay? We we impulsively broke back below this low and that low, giving me a clue that we may be able to capitalize on a move down to here to give this give us this kind of one, two, three touch structure, okay, and this expanding pattern before that move to the upside. Because notice last time when we broke these lows, we did so by way of a wick. Yes, we wicked through it, but uh, often it's the case that these wicks will get filled before the move to the upside to give us that one, two, three. So just this is potentially just a, a shorter term move and a bit of a kind of momentum play, if you like. We just get rid of that and we zoom down. You can see what have we done? We impulse down and then we corrected. Okay, we impulse correction potential continuation. We did tap into that low, but look how we're moving down aggressively on the daily chart. Okay. And you can see if I just zoom down a little bit, we have the impulse correction continuation confirming a move to the downside at this moment in time. We do have this sideways correction, and this is partly why this is lower down the list. Yes, it does look a little bit like a reversal structure, but look what we've done since forming this. We have tapped into this high here, okay? So we had a series of near misses. We had a near miss to here, a near miss to here, near miss to here, near miss to here. Then all of these near misses get filled, but how did they get filled? Did price push up above them all, okay, and form something like that? No, it tapped into the last one, okay, before the previous correction, and then it moved down. And how did it get to that area? It got to that area by way of initially we had this, okay, that was looking promising for a move to the downside, but then we near missed to this high, so it doesn't surprise me that price continued. We got to this area by way of non-progressive price action like this, okay, which also has a one, two, three in it, okay? So we got to this area of value structurally, giving me a clue that this is not a reversal structure and that this is actually a reversal structure for that move to the, that shorter term move to the downside. So with all of that in mind, uh, what I'll be looking for today is the following. And I'll try not to delete my path tool this time. There we go. So if we break below here, which it appears we do, uh, it appears we are doing, which is why I had an alert set, then I'll be looking to uh, for price to correct, and then I'll be looking to get short on the break of the flag or within it. Uh, and then as a first target, I would be able to manage this down to the low of this structure. So the reason I haven't got my risk to reward tool set to here, and I've got it set to here, is because this, if price was to do something more complex, that will be likely where it would do it, because that is the start of this piece of structure. Okay. So if that was to occur, then I would manage this, be able to manage this for something in the region of two and a half to three percent. And of course, if we push down to where's the target? I can't even find it. So sometimes these shorter term moves or supposedly shorter term moves, you know, there's still, even if I was to drag the risk to reward tool down to there, you can see that there would still be a lot of profit potential. And even just down to that low, we're talking something in the region of 5%. So, so that is EuroCAD as I say, uh, as I see it. And I will set another alert after this or a Google calendar reminder after this video to remind me to check this pair in about an hour's time to see uh, whether price is starting to correct or not and whether this tight flag is forming. But that is EuroCAD. Um, Euro Kiwi, which is last up in the other direction. 
So just analyzing the price action as I see it. Okay, so previously I was looking to get short on this, okay, because this is where we have to take a message from the market. So we we have this high here, we near miss to it, we tap into that area. We do so by way of a one, two, three touch structure, which has a middle section. So we don't need to come all the way up here. And previously I was saying to you, this is what I was saying about trading is not about being right, okay? So we have this here, we have this high here, we tap into that area. Okay, so there was no reason for us to come back down. But what we do have to look at is the nature of price. So although we tapped into that area, if you look what happened when, when we moved down, after we moved down, okay, we pushed up very, very aggressively and, and retraced about 80% of this move. Okay, so when we were down here, there wasn't any business, price didn't have any business coming back up here because it had already taken out the highs. But when I see, uh, when I see price action like this, just look at what's happening on the weekly, okay? We also have a low here. We come back down. We near missed that low. We have this sharp pullback that I was talking about, and then we tap into that low, and then look how we're pushing up. This is the key detail. Look how we've pushed up. Look at the momentum. If price closes like that today, then it's, a very, it's very likely that we would see a move up to here to complete what may be this kind of structure, given that the market likes to move in parallels. And then this just becomes a one, two, three wave middle section to push up, completely break above the high, and then potentially move to the downside, which to some extent would be in alignment with what the DXY is doing. Is If the dollar is selling off aggressively now, then it wouldn't surprise me if the euro moves to the upside aggressively so and then this would be the near miss to here okay so we do have to take a message from the market and be neutral enough to flip our bias and i think that's one of the things that men in particular have a hard time doing because their ego is so heavily involved a lot of the time so with that in mind if we just analyze this price action we kind of have so i'm just seeing this now just flipping my bias we kind of have this Okay, which so we tap into this hook point here and price pushes to the downside aggressively, which is what I was forecasting. I didn't manage to get an in entry because there wasn't one. Okay, but what did we do after that? We then tapped into these lows. So we we fill this near miss, take out the low that we near miss to, and then we push up aggressively. Now, if price is going to move to the downside, we do often see these sharp moves up followed by a sharp sell off. We don't normally see a sharp move up, followed by a sharp move down, followed by a sharp move up. So when I see a sharp move down, followed by a sharp move up, that is usually indicative of a consolidation to push higher, okay? And I'm not, because if we just zoom out, so one of the reasons this is last on the list is because we're kind of trading through these highs, okay? Or kind of slightly below them. But if we just zoom out, I don't think those lower time frame hold highs are going to hold much weight when you look at this price action. If you look at how aggressively it's moved up, it's well. it looks well and truly to me like the buyers have well and truly stepped in and that they will likely be holding their positions up to this high and to this high that we kind of near missed too. So therefore, these highs don't hold much weight to me anymore. Okay, so what I'll be looking for from this pair quite simply with that in mind. And once again, because of the momentum that we've moved up with, I'll not be looking to place a reduced risk entry on the break of the flag, especially if I'm trading into these highs. But what I will be doing and what will be more intentional is if price corrects sideways, okay, you can see if I just analyze this on the 15 minute and I'm fast running out of time, despite how quickly I've tried to get through this, price left us with a footprint. We come back down, we near miss to the footprint. If we we, we kind of have this kind of one, two, three middle section here forming one, two, three. If we push back down, tap into that low, then I'll be looking to get long with the risk entry. And that to me would be very intentional uh, for a move to the upside. And then I would be, be able to manage this up to, let's say this first inflection point here, which appears on the four hour chart for something in the region of seven to 8%. And of course, if the higher time frame direction kicks in, then it could be all systems go. That is what I'm going to be looking for today, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I bid you a great day and a great weekend, and I will see you in the next video. 
which will be next week, most likely on Monday. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you again soon.